Oh shit, okay. What is this? Girl Scout. Role model. Fuck you, Rocky Wits! You don't know shit about metal music. This is the real shit right here. Get out, you faker. You're off the team, Rocky. You're not making music for Gatorbox no more. I'm gonna find out who recorded this and hire them. I wonder if they're on Spotify. I guess this was 95. I guess that'd be Napster. Fuck you, Mom and Dad! Is that the end? It's not gonna play a whole song, is it? I'm gonna get a cola. Actually, I changed my mind. I figured it would be very era appropriate of me to drink high C ecto cooler. Woo, it's the 90s! Hell yeah! This is still, this is really, this is still going on. Okay, it's a good song. It's still going, huh? <laughs> oh, I can't jump. I was gonna go jump on the fucking couch. God damn it. Just one button. Let me go. Oh, this is a map. <laughs> cool mixtape, bro. <laughs> This room is a spooky room. Is the chair gonna move? Oh, what is this up here? Uh oh, uh oh. <gasps> Hang on, let me get in the light so we can read this label. Harmaran number nine, distilled in Ireland. Irish whiskey. All right, crumpled pages. John Russell opened his eyes and saw them, the stars. <laughs> Oh shit, this must be like... This must be like one of Dad's shitty rough drafts? That's a horrible op- I guess the joke is is that he sucks at writing, that's the thing. Uh, twinkling as if he were lying on the grass in his family's yard in Massachusetts, even though that place was a million miles away. No, he blinked the sleep from his eyes looking through the carbon-reinforced safety glass of the space station Archimedes. Yes. He was a long way from home, but the future needed him. <laughs> we gotta go back in time and save JFK! John Russell's head swam. He felt incredibly drunk, despite not having touched a drop in hours. We just found the fucking booze. He vomited onto his feet. His bare feet. Why did you have to... Why'd you have to... Now it sounds like it's a fucking fetish thing. That's fucking weird, man. Something, something. He was completely naked. Oh, okay, now it is a weird fetish thing. Thanks, asshole. He looked up and, and met the eyes of a gorgeous blonde woman wearing a tight polymer fiber tunic. The fabric that strained at the seams to contain her generous bosom was emblazoned with the phrase Matter Transfer tra Transference Operator. Then he passed out. What the fuck? John Russell had crossed the gap. The gap in time. No, he's not going back to say He's not really going back to save JFK, is he? Only messages had passed off her. But now, and man, they needed him. Now more than ever. Changing the past was no longer good enough. The instructions from the council had been clear. What to procure. What to construct from it. How to assemble it. So he made the machine. How to transport him bodily across time and I feel like this needs to be like and then John Freeman yelled from top of lung because only he who had saved the president's life twice before holy shit I don't think I read this note the first time I played <laughs> this guy got sent back in time by a lady with huge tits to go save JFK that's the premise of his fucking book Wow. Wow. 
back to basics. Sent back in time to Dallas 1960s. I'm noticing over here, over here. Let's focus on this one that says, what if JFK wasn't JFK? Chinese, Japanese, Lebanese. Paradox results in JFK death being desired outcome. Magic bullet theory. <laughs> Look at this. Record JFK off of HBO. Magic bullet theory. Lone gunman. X-Files, oh my god. Check check with Sam, X-Files. Grass, grassy Knoll, Steamrolled, Intercept, LHO, oh, I don't know what LHO means. <laughs> Why not disrupt motorcade minutes before LHO? Oh, Lee Harvey Oswald. Nah, ha, ha, yeah. He's the guy that pulled the trigger. Allegedly. Okay. What is this? What? Oh, that's the... I managed to grab the lid of the box through this thing. Dad's- oh, this is Dad's second book. The Accidental Pariah. Oh, unlocking the key. A message from our future saved the president's life once, but within the next 24 hours there will be another attempt, and the lines of communication are down. Uh-oh. Uh-oh! Uh-oh! This stream is 18 and up only. Stranger Under My Roof. Uh-oh. Number one best-selling advice book for parents of teens. <laughs> this fucking lady down there. The teen years are fraught with change of all types. Physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual. Let's start an argument. Let's put the book down here. Now, now when mom and dad come back home, now they're in for a surprise. Oh, well, that's probably the combination. 0451, I think I can remember that. Uh, David asked me to write you regarding the reviews you've been submitting the last few months. Frankly, they're becoming more trouble than they're worth from an editing standpoint. There's a, <laughs> there's a word limit. Oh, so he just likes to... Oh, because he writes shitty science fiction, so he... Yeah, yeah, because the thing we found in the typewriter... The whole first paragraph was just fucking nothing. Oh. Four. Oh yeah, we're in, we're in. Dear Mr. M Mason, please find and close your original document and a type copy for your records, blah, 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 blah. Oh, will and testament. Oh shit, this is the, this is the psycho guy. Ah, oh, save 25% on... Tortilla chips. <laughs> quality quality tours. Your best bet on the Mississippi. Artistic tours. Pots. Call Laura McGarvey at 414-224-2780. Thank you for calling the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel. If you know your party's extension, you may dial it at any time. The following call options are available <laughs> for your convenience. If you wish to speak to someone in circulation, the Milwaukee pair, press Sentinel? one. For placing a classified ad, press two. Oh if shit! You wish to speak to someone in the newsroom, press three. It's the, the sports department. Press four. It's the number to from this newspaper. What the fuck? Five. To reach our advertising accounting department, press six. God damn, these people got money. Fuck. I live in a I live in a fucking wood mill. Can you believe that shit? Soda can, Dr. Jitters. <laughs> Dr. Jitters, there we go. All right, what is this, textbook, world history? This looks important, so we're gonna put this somewhere where they're just not gonna find it. Oh, that didn't work at all. This says reproductive system worksheet. Oh, boy. <laughs> Below are two stories. The events are all out of order. Get a sheet of lined paper. Write reproductive system worksheet number six at the top. Then choose one of the two stories and rewrite it. Begin with the title and your name. Find a topic sentence to begin your paragraph. Put the sentences in chronological order. Make sure the last sentence is a good concluding statement. So this is like a whole, uh... It's, she's peppered in. She's basically being a smartass. Uh, she's, um, she's peppered in all of these phrases in this story. Uh, and then at the, at the very end, okay, so it's a story about, I guess, like, Nazi, it's the, it's the Nazi invasion of Poland, 1930, yeah, that would make sense. 
Uh, <laughs> about two weeks later, Bor Boris loses his grip on life. Essa has given up her rations to keep Boris alive, but in the end, nothing can save him. Since the lining of the uterus is not needed for pregnancy, it comes out through the vagina. <laughs> Essa vows to survive. She sets off to join the Polish resistance as a daring spy and saboteur. Another ovum starts to develop in one of the ovaries and, pass, and the process begins again. It is incredible how the female body knows how to prepare for pregnancy. And then the teacher's like, see me after class because she's being a fucking smartass about this stupid bullshit assignment. There we go. Okay. That's not how fucking records work. <laughs> it didn't do what I thought it was gonna do. Okay. It's down here. Uh oh. Uh oh. Is this dad's. Oh, this dad's second book again. Dear Mr. Greenbrier, I write to inform you that unfortunately Mercury Books will be unable to publish your follow up to The Accidental Pariah. Despite the low sales of The Accidental Savior, we went ahead with the publication of the second book in hopes the John Russell series catching on. However, sales of the second book have in fact been lower than those of the first, and so our stewardship of the series must end here. It has been a pleasure working as your publisher, and we wish you and John Russell the best in your future endeavors. <laughs> well, yeah, Dad got fired from the the book place, and he just probably started just fucking just knocking back drinks. Samantha, please give this to your mother. Janice, thank you for having Danny over to your new home. He has missed having his friend Samantha in the neighborhood very much. Danny asked if he could lend... Oh, no, Danny was the other guy with the Nintendo then. Danny asked if he could lend Samantha his Nintendo Street Fighting tape. <sighs> Parents just don't understand. Am I right? Your next door neighbor is kind of like your default friend. And Danny only got weirder over the years. So moving away has been a good excuse to, like, not see him anymore. But he did always have the good Nintendo games. Maybe I'll give him a call. Samantha, you're a fucking cunt. Lip, lip blom. Lip stuff. Butt stuff. Oh shit! Did that like balance? That went through the window. What? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Can I throw things through the window? That was probably a, that was probably a bad way to test that theory. And then Lonnie says, "Yeah, I'm totally in. See you there." I'm gonna kick your your butt. Y O U apostrophe R E. Get ready. And then they're firing a Hadouken at, and it says U underneath it. See? So you know what they say about the. Best Shut up, Sam! My... Her name is Lonnie. She's coming over tomorrow. Uh oh, Lonnie's coming over, and they're gonna look at each other's vaginas. <laughs> They're, they're not, they're gonna shoot some Hadoukens of their own. <laughs> Crumpled paper. Katie, please, whatever you found, don't tell mom and dad. The attic. See, so again, it starts to feel like a, like a fucking horror game. It's like, don't tell anyone what you found. The attic. So it's like, oh shit, did, oh no, did this Lonnie person, did they, did they kill people? Oh shit, what's in the attic? We gotta get in the attic. We gotta get in the fucking attic. Oh yeah, I forgot there's a whole fucking upstairs to this house too. God damn, these people are loaded. The tombs of youth. <laughs> With I, I, I thought I saw a triforce, so I was like, oh. Well, let's go upstairs. Done. Oh wait, hang on. It's gotta be like Resident Evil. <laughs> what is this? Cassette case. Bratmobile, potty mouth, for Sam. Uh oh. It looks like Lonnie's been making the love thing. Stab, cherry bomb, throw away. P R D T C. Some special. Oh no, shit! It's moving. Fuck your fans. Polaroid baby. Panic, bitch. The th theme. Richard. Cool schmool. Juana. Kiss or die. No, you don't, Queenie. What's that say on the inside? You're gonna, you're gonna like this one. 
It's weird hanging out with girls. Daniel was around ever since. Especially girls that want to fuck you. What is this? Daniel called again. He wants his Nintendo game back. Daniel called. So look at this fucking this fucking bitch. This fucking this fucking girl basically played this guy out of a game and borrowed it and she's not going to give it back because she's too busy playing this game with her fucking side pussy and Daniel just wants his fucking game back. Sternly wait, read sternly worded letter. To whom it may concern, I, Samantha Greenbrier, am 17 years old and am therefore an independent, fully functional human being. The fact that you still forbid me from going into the city on my own is, frankly, absurd. Compare with Katie, who was only three, parentheses three, the number three, years older than me, and yet you allowed her to go all the way across an ocean to another continent on her own. I just want to spend an evening in a normal, totally safe, underline for emphasis, their emphasis, not mine, city, on my own, like a human being, and since you may also remember that I have my own car, so you can't stop, really stop me. What fucking, I wasn't a piece of shit like this at 17. That's the thing, is that I'm gay. I knew at 17. I wasn't a piece of shit to people like this fucking... Fuck her. Let's go through all of her things. Uh oh. What's uh oh that's the oh that's the no that's the panty drawer. We can't go in that one. The stream's locked. Oh great. Another fucking cassette. Bratmobile, cool schmool. Let's put this trash in. Batman! I kissed a girl and I liked it. Taste of her cherry chapstick. That's euphemism. That's that means clitoris. In case you didn't know. <laughs> yeah, where, where is the Nintendo? Oh wait, wait, hang on, hang on. This is important. This is this is important. Fuck this stupid music. This is shitty music. Whoever wrote this should fucking jump off a cliff. This is terrible. I'm gonna fucking there. All right. I just I just noticed this down here. It can't possibly be Street Fighter. Adventure Adventurous the Cat returns. That's where yeah, they wouldn't be able to get the licensing for for that. Yeah, there's no copyright on the back. So there is a Super Nintendo in the house somewhere. Oh, we got more games. We got more games. Super Spitfire. Uh classic Super Spitfire. I saw this I saw this AGDQ 2015. Priceless, dude. Classic. Classic speedrun. Great speedrun. And also we got... What's this next one here? Uh, Journey of Crystal. <sighs> one of my favorite, dude. Journey of Crystal. You know what? I actually found that glitch when you can clip through the wall and get to the final boss within the first 15 minutes of the game. Totally revolutionized speedrunning for this game. Beautiful. Great. Oh, wait. No. That's actually a, a cat. <laughs> Rest in peace, Mittens. <laughs> oh, fuck. The King's Labyrinth is... Oh, no! She continued the... She continued the fucking story with the captain. Here's the TLDR. Captain Allegra and the first mate, who are now both women, they go down to the, the lair of the mortal king of the island, the throne room. They get to the throne room, they find the treasure, the immortal, immortal king comes back to life and tries to put a hex on him, and then the first mate ties the magical rope around her waist and runs off after the treasure, and then all of a sudden the rope goes tight and then it goes slack, and then the captain pulls the rope back and there's nobody at the end of the rope, so the captain runs away. There you go. So, fuck it. I'm willing to bet that it's, uh, it's a, uh, analogy for Sam and Lonnie, they've become self-inserts. I'm just going to guess. Samantha, S is for special. A is for ador adorable. M is for bitch. 